the first thing I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about the now. And I want to dispense with two really faulty assumptions, which we really just have to basically shoot and haul away. Uh, and you hear these all the time. The first assumption is, well, all corporate crises are unique. How many, how many people have heard that? Oh, it's all unique. Well, you know what? If all physical phenomena were unique, we could never classify it anything, and then we could never make act you know, any progress, right? So first, that's not true, and we're going to classify them in just a minute. The second is uh, corporate crises are unpredictable. Well, that's true in one sense of the word, uh, in one sense of the term. They're unpredictable in terms of time scale for now, uh, but they're not unpredictable in terms of the buckets they're in. Okay. So we, get, we have this discussion all the time. I've heard, heard from practitioners, oh, you know, how could we have known? All corporate crises are unique. They're unpredictable. Mm, maybe not so much. So today, these will all seem very common to you. So for those that think that corporate crises are all sort of unique, actually, here are the buckets, relatively speaking, today that you see. So high-profile product failures, violations of health and safety laws, unethical labor practices, accounting regulators, CEO, <coughs> bad conduct, failure to safeguard customer data, and finally, what we call cultural disconnects, where the society keeps moving and the culture of the corporation stays put, and all of a sudden you have this yawning gap between the two. With those sort of broad brush, I want to walk through 10 key drivers of corporate crises in the future. The first one is aging, which we're going to talk about. We're going to do little thumbnails on each one of these. Aging. The second is resource scarcity. The third is prosumers and makers, which we'll talk about and have fun with. The, third, the fourth is replication and 3D printing. Fifth is automation. Sixth is localization, because everybody talks about, you know, internationalization and everything, but that's somewhat true. Uh, the next is bioethics. Then we have extreme transparency, surveillance, and then alternative economic models. Now, I'm not saying that these things are themselves corporate crises, but they're the drivers of corporate crises. And so, you, so what I'm going to do is sort of give you a tour uh, of the future with these weak signals that we can see today. And I think you can all start to make connections between those and where corporations might find themselves in interesting situations. There was the famous Target case where we were able to guess uh, that somebody was pregnant and it sort of outed them with their dad, and most people have heard about that. Um, most people haven't heard about Axiom yet, which is the big data broker in the United States, which is the sort of major player in data broking. Um, the Snowden stuff really changed, started to change American perceptions. You see the Senate has, is actually going to take up that bill today. Uh, and this is going to start to increase sort of uh, awareness much more. If the United States catches up with the views of, say, a country like Germany, which is much more staunch in its views on privacy, then a lot of our sort of information-based businesses today have very large operational problems, very large operational problems. So you really have this sort of binary betting game. You can either bet that the US public will kind of stay where it is and be more laissez-faire on its privacy, or that it will go towards sort of Germany and continental Europe, Europe and want more privacy. Where you place your bets, and it's a very big bet if you're a data company, uh, makes a lot of difference in the future. Why that matters for crisis is, if you have sort of this pyramidal chain of command that's too slow, you can't respond fast enough in a high-speed environment. And so you have to create alternative structures to more quickly respond uh, in that way. The second problem is, by creating a large pyramid, you create a distance between you and the people who buy your product. And theoretically, doing more listening and changing that hierarchy gives you a greater ability to move fast, but also not to have some of those cultural disconnects we talked about uh, at the beginning that lead to very large corporate crises.